On July 9th of this year, eight weeks ago, oh man, I don't know how many weeks ago that was, I said that, hey, I've got to step away. I'm just, I'm struggling. I'm really struggling. It's hard. And I didn't have a good idea of how long that break was gonna last. I was nervous about uh, publishing kind of my own struggle, my own story with mental health. Um, because you guys come here for the vintage, you know? But I think some of you guys come here because you just, you mess with me. You're here because I'm a goofball, because I'm funny, because I'm cool. For whatever reason, I find cool vintage stuff. You guys are here for me. And I think you guys who fall into that category appreciated my vulnerability with my struggle with mental health. In my break, I deleted Instagram straight off of my phone. And I didn't really see like any of the support. I didn't see any of the comments. I didn't see any of the DMs. And I think I went to go, I had to look at somebody I was trying, oh, what? So like I went on Instagram and like downloaded it and looked at some of the comments. And I just, I started crying because you, the amount of support that I, I got for being so vulnerable about what I've been struggling with and just seeing how many of you that I've touched through my positivity, through my comedy. Some of you have watched my videos when you're having a rough day and to know that I've been a part of the positivity in your life and I've never met you in some cases. Um, I'm just truly blessed and when I w posted that video, I didn't know what the reaction would be. I knew that if I checked right away, I knew that no matter the views or the, no matter the comments or the DMs, I knew that I was in such a bad place that no matter what number that was, I knew it wasn't gonna be enough. I knew that because I judge myself based on the amount of followers, comments, likes, and stuff, I knew that that number's just not gonna be enough. I'll always be like, ah, oh, that could have been 45. Ah, oh, that could have been 12. Oh, that could... You know, just because that's how I've been since day one. It's always been about that. And just, I think a lot of people in social media are so bound to the serotonin and that number. And it's also very like, it's relational to your success and to your size. So for example, if I had a million followers and only a hundred thousand likes or a hundred likes, or I know somebody who has like a hundred thousand plus followers within seven minutes, they got, I think 200 likes. If I got 200 likes on a post, yeehaw baby. Like, but it's just perspective for them. That's, that's yeah. I'm supposed to get 200 likes within the first 10 minutes. I think what's worked for me is to think like when you get a post that doesn't get a lot of engagement, when it just doesn't get the engagement that you thought, you have to look at the number and go, whoa, four people, whoa, 40 people, whoa, this amount of people liked my content. Whatever, however low or high number that is, that's the strategy where you have to start tricking your mind that it's not about the numbers. It's about just creating content that you enjoy. So many of us are trapped in posting booty pics, but we wanna be posting motivational content. You post motivational content and you're like, damn, yes, I finally did it. And then nobody likes that. But then you go back to what you were posting because that's what either got you famous or got you big. And so you're so stuck in that that you avoid doing what you actually wanna be doing. It's gonna eat you from the inside, it really will. You have to break out of that. You have to find what makes you happy. Content creators are just entrepreneurs of the soul, if you will, right? Like, those are outlets for you. If you wanna talk about fitness, if you wanna talk about dogs, if you wanna post booty pics, if you wanna post motivational content, if you wanna do this or that, or play backyard baseball, do it. Who cares if five people like it or not? If that's what you want to do, or you wanna try it, you know, that's what's important because not only from a business perspective is that just gonna give you like more information to go, oh, like that's something maybe not a lot of people care about, but also like who cares, <laughs> you know? Like what if you want to do it, that's why you have a page for XYZ. That's why you started a business is so that nobody could tell you what to do. For me, I've worked so hard 
you know, at this thing for three years now. And it was weird to be, to not have Instagram on my phone. So I would get home after my job and I wouldn't work on my podcast that I talk about mental health. I wouldn't work on my vintage stuff. I'd drive by Goodwills and Salvation Armies and thrift stores and garage sales. And it was like, I couldn't work on anything. So I would literally just get home and sit in my couch. And it was weird. Cause I'm like, do I watch a movie? Do I play video games? Do I like, cause I'm trying to find, I was trying to find my hobbies, I don't know. Getting to know yourself and getting to love yourself is a long process. It's not something where I was gonna be like, I'm back! And then like, now I love myself and now I've got like all my friends and like all of my, like everything's all set up. Like that's just not, it takes more than eight weeks to do that. And I think partnered with like the positive response I received on my video coupled with like September being my birthday month and like suicide prevention month. And I just felt like that was a good time to come back. Um, and to kind of just raise awareness and I've got a couple shirts left for the Vintage Indie Still Here tour, kind of mental health world tour that I made up. Um, and so I've got a couple of those and the money was gonna go towards my therapy bills, which I can afford, but it's like, I use Vintage Indie and the funds that I make by selling vintage clothes to pay for things like my car, for groceries, for my mental health bills. So I wasn't necessarily in like a terribly financial position where I'm not gonna be able to afford it this month, but like it, it's also $320. When I was 25, I was able to do $20 copays. And so every t like time I would visit the counselor, it'd be 20 bucks. So over a month, that would be $80. But then I turned 26 last year, you have to get off like your parents and off your other insurance. So I got onto my own insurance plan. It was cheaper for me to do out of pocket with my counselor and that would be $80 instead. So now it's 320 a month instead of 400. So for me, I just, it was worth it. And so I do that. And so therapy was kind of expensive. It's just something like by raising money, I'm creating this piece that for supporters and people who are currently going through mental health struggles, it's a piece you can wear that says, I've had a choice to leave earth, to take my own life, maybe someone I know, maybe someone I wanna support, but I'm still here. I'm still here fighting. There's a period at the end because it's a call for like, in this moment, right here. Like, I'm in this moment, I'm still here, I'm still fighting. Anxiety and depression are a bitch, but you know, there's some good days and there's some bad days. There's both. There's days I don't wanna get up and there's days where I'm like, damn, I'm glad I'm alive. You have both of those when you struggle with mental health issues and it's important to enjoy every side of it, to be mindful in all these moments. Um, and I, I just, I wanna speak more on it on my channel. If you haven't already like checked out my mental health podcast where I interview everyday people like on their experience with mental health, like check that out. It's Classic Buffalo, that's the name of it. And uh, I just finished season one. So that, that like just came out. So please go check that out if you haven't. There was a guy that I was never really fond of in my grad class who was, you know, a bit more quiet and just played basketball at lunch. And, you know, didn't didn't chase girls or went for beers on Friday, but he actually showed up to the hospital and, and brought me like my favorite meal from McDonald's. I forget what it was exactly, but um, and then now, like to this day, we're actually going to a Canucks game tomorrow night, and we're like, <laughs> we're best friends. So it's kind of crazy how some of the worst times can turn into the best times. Um, and for the things that helped me a lot were obviously the medication and I had to get hospitalized. So obviously that was, you know, there's nothing I can do about that. And that is gonna help. But the big one was like not drinking as much, like getting a lot of sleep, uh, maybe getting to more sports, uh, things to get your mind off, you know, what you're kind of going through. And there's always, a, there's always someone who's gonna help you out. You just have to reach out and ask, if that makes sense, so. Season two will be sharing my story, which I think I'm gonna be putting that on Vintage Indie as well. So, I'll be posting sporadically because I'm gonna be focused on writing my story and like finishing that. I'm like 130 pages in, like just writing that out and then creating them into podcast episodes of this is my story. This is what's happened to me. This is how I got to 2020, 2021. This is how I got here. I get emotional sometimes about how much this account means to me because of how dark of a place I was in and how tiny of a step 
creating this little tiny account was. It just makes me think there's so many people who are this close to being so happy. Because I had one thought that was, what if I could sell clothes on Instagram? I didn't even think that was possible. I didn't judge myself because I got three likes on the first 20 posts. I didn't even think it was gonna be successful, but I just tried. It's ju life is about trying. You owe it to yourself to try to do that business, to go out of your comfort zone, to try a meetup, to go try and play volleyball, to go try playing cards, join that euchre group down the street, I don't know. You owe it to yourself to try to make yourself happy, to find new hobbies, to take a leap of faith. And I think for a lot of us, that step is a lot smaller than you think. So all that rambling aside, Hopefully I'll talk to you guys soon about something. I don't know. I'll talk about ducks next week. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I should do that. Just duck segment where I just like go in the corner of my house and just, so now we're talking about ducks. Yeah. But it's been your boy Ryan from Vintage Indie. Um, hope to talk soon.